it real I'm independent, I don't need no deal I'm Jaws on the beat, I got flow that kills Do my thing with a few G's, Lauren Hill Alright guys, so here we are in Logic And we're doing this video to show you how to export multi-tracks or stems So that they are ready to go into another DAW Process start to finish, we're going to export the multi-tracks of this session And drop them into FL Studio Two things just to start off. When we've got a track that starts like this, right on bar one, the sound straight away. We need a little something beforehand to lead into that. Now you're going to bring it into another DAW. So just putting like a tiny little blank gap is not going to be very useful. So in logic here, we're going to go up to here. See this little triangle? Okay. We're going to go just next to the one and we get this icon just here. We're going to drag it back just so we've got one bar there. If we zoom in, we want to have a count across one bar. And we can see there we've got half a bar and you should just see a zero pop up there. That's going to give us a one bar counting. So, and that's just so we don't get any false starts here with the audio and something triggering a little bit early and stuff going out of sync. At the end, it's less important. We just have a little bit of a rollover at the end here, look. And we're just gonna highlight by clicking up at the top, drag across, make sure we've got this whole measure here, right? Make sure that's going to the zero. It has a tendency, look, to go just past it sometimes. So just want it on the zero, beautiful. So that's set up and ready to go. That's gonna be the amount of project. Bit of silence at the start, tiny little bit at the end, just to let anything fade away if it needs to. And next we can do shift command and E. We're going to get this complicated menu. The other way we can get there is by going file, export, all tracks as audio files. Now what I would recommend doing is making a specific folder this is going to go into. I'm just doing this as a demo. So I'm just going to go to the desktop and just make a new folder there and call this example bounce. I would save it in my project folder as like a multi-track package, but just for argument's sake, this is how I'm going to do this. And there's a couple of things that we want to make sure we change here. So range, trim silence at, at file end, not really. We want to extend file to project end. Now, if you've got a really long reverb or a really long delay in your project, that is going to go on forever and ever. Either put a gate as your very last um, plugins so when it gets below the threshold, the gate closes and it ends it that way. Format is completely up to you. I keep pretty much everything in WAV. I've always worked that way or that's completely up to you. Bit depth, 24 bits going to be fine. 32 bit float if you really need it. 24 bits going to be fine for 99% of things. If we've got multi stacks of drums and things like that, we might want to do one file per instrument. It completely depends on your project, but one file per track most of the time is going to be all right. Or one file per channel strip. If we do it per channel strip, we're also going to get our buses and reverbs and things like that as well over, which can be very useful. Right, let's do one file per channel strip here. I don't want to bypass the effect plugins. I want the mix to be essentially the same when I drop it over. So that's what we're going to do there. We do want to include volume and pan automation. Normalize is going to be off and I do not want to add the resulting files into this project. File name wise, we can customize it, but like I say, store them all in a sensible folder. If everything's named sensibly, you're going to be fine there, um, but you can add like a client name or something like that and if needed. So I could put example in here and you get the file name at the bottom. So it'll be like kick01 example and then where it's come from in terms of measures, etc. And it's come out as a WAV. So we're going to hit export and get that folder. Okay, so now we've got that, we need to go into FL Studio. So as long as you're on FL Studio 20, you should be able to import multi-tracks in. So let's get the folder up, obviously navigate to wherever it is that you had it. And we can see in here, we've got all of the different bits. We're gonna go shift, uh, drag them all over and drop them inside FL. And you can see that Logic's cut the silence at the start. So it starts right on zero. And we can see that everything starts at the right time. However, it's not lined up with the grid yet. And that's because we haven't set the BPM correctly. So the BPM for that project was 88. Something I will often do is write that in the project if I'm sending it over to somebody else. So now we can see we've got the project imported into FL Studio and all elements start at exactly the right point and are where they should be. So sick of these hypocrites, situation sticky like licorice. Trust me, it's gotten so ridiculous. Now, a quick tip in FL is we can assign them all to a new mixer channel really, really quickly by holding down Shift, selecting them all over here, and hitting Command and L. And they are now all assigned to tracks. 
so sick of these hypocrites Situation sticky like licorice Trust me it's gotten so ridiculous Used to act inhibited Nowadays a vocal voice and their opinion like it's relevant And that guys is how we can export a logic project and import it into another DAW like FL Studio I hope that was helpful and I will see you guys on the next video. Let's keep it real. I'm independent. I don't need no deal. I'm Jaws on the beat. I got flow that kills. Do my thing with a few G's. Lauren Hill.